welcome to another episode of Warhammer 40,000. It's Challenger Scorpion, and Brian Morrow is back. He has his Night Lord's army with him, and a new clash on the channel here. They'll be fighting against the Orcs, led by Gut Ripper. So first time clash here on the channel. They'll be fighting across uh, this rugged, uh, barren wasteland here, craters. Uh, all across the battlefield in these rock formations here blasted by high winds and sand over time some tank traps running across the table in the center uh, an imperial guard ammunition dump that has been abandoned a couple of tank traps here as well and then uh, more craters and rock formations across the table it's a nice backdrop nice uh, scene has been set as uh, we look forward to this encounter between orcs and night lords Right, so welcome to this 1850 points game, Challenger Scorpion, Orcs against Night Lords. So the Orc army here, uh, it's been battered and bruised in a uh, various number of games. Uh, they've emerged victorious a few times, uh, but uh, more often than not they have been beaten. But we'll see how well they do here today. Uh, they're seasoned in their campaign. Still, Gut Ripper uh, is back, even though... Uh, plenty of rumours going around that he has been killed in a number of games. He's back here, it's hard to get rid of him. But he leads the force here. Uh, then a mastery level 2 weird boy. And then a couple of mechs as well that can be attached uh, to different units. Heavy support, 6 killer cans, 2 grotzookas, 4 rocket launchers. And at the back there, uh, the Gorkonaut. Uh, with five burner boys, two of those have been switched over to mechs. Uh, then one blitzer bomber as uh, some air cover for the orcs. And then ten storm boys uh, with knob, boss, pole, and big chopper. And then uh, the battle wagon here with three mega knobs there for them. Uh, then troops choices is two units of orc boys. They're in trucks with reinforced rams and big shooters. And uh, 10 boys uh, for each of those units with heavy armor, uh, knob, boss pole, and big chopper. And then finally, fast attack option here. It's nine war bikers uh, with boss, um, pole, and big chopper, and knob for them. So that is the orc force here. Quite used to using them, uh, but it'll be a challenge as they take on uh, the dreaded Night Lord's army. Okay, so this is my 1850 Night Lord list. Um, in command, we have a Chaos Lord on a bike. He has a Martyr Corn and the Axe of Blind Fury. He's going to be accompanied by four Chaos Bikes uh, with two Meldagons. We then have a Chaos Relic Predator with an Execution Plasma Cannon, a Chaos Land Raider with a Dirge Caster, nine chosen Chaos Space Marines with a Meldagon, Flamer, and three Parmols. We have Seven Chaos Space Marines inside a Rhino with a Havoc Launcher. We then have nine Chaos Space Marines equipped for hand-to-hand -hand, and there's a Flamer Knee on it. So we then have two Mauler Fiends, uh, a Contemptor Dreadnought with two Butcher Cannons and a Havoc Launcher. And finishing off we have nine Chaos Raptors with a Meltagon Flamer and a pair of Lightning Claws. And it's an on -bound list. Now, Commander got Master of Maneuvers Warlord trait, so he has outflank. Right, so that's Brian's uh, list there. Very nice looking. He's got two of those Mauler Fiends, so uh, dreading having to face against two of them. Usually it's enough to try and deal with just the one. Uh, but it's nice that he can bring variety to his list. I think every time uh, he plays, he uses something different, so that adds a nice bit of variety to the games. So looking forward to this one to see how well the Orcs deal. Uh, with this Chaos Force, and it's quite numerous, there's uh, plenty of infantry in this force here and then some uh, pretty good tanks and machines for them as well. So we're going to go into scenario and deployment now for these two forces. Right, so the scenario is the scouring. There's six objectives on the table. They're going to have random values. Haven't rolled up for them yet. And deployment is Dawn of War. So 12 inches in uh, at either end for both sides. So the Night Lords will be deploying at this end of the table. Uh, looking 12 inches in this direction. And then coming around, the Orcs will deploy uh, from this end of the table. So expect both sides... Uh, should just line up against each other and then go for these objectives which are pretty much all of them uh, 
situated outside of the deployment uh, zones for both sides here. So both uh, armies will need to advance into the centre of the table. So you can expect uh, a smash up in the middle, which is what we're looking forward to, I think. Brian has chosen to uh, deploy first and then he can choose uh, whether he wants to go first or second. So uh, objectives, uh, Night Lords at this end, there is an objective just there. Uh, then an objective just here, uh, pretty close to the Orc deployment zone. Uh, then a, na a natural one here, just the ammo dump, there is an objective just there. Another objective quite close to the Orc deployment zone. And then another one on the Night Lord's left flank. And then the final one is just tucked around here, just inside uh, the Night Lord deployment zone. Uh, so, nice mixture of objectives, both sides quite close to a few of them. And then some of them just in the middle ground uh, to be captured as well. And then uh, the mat that we're using today uh, is the FAT mat, F-A-T uh, mat. Uh, it's produced by Frontline Gaming and table war uh, and you can see just the way it's laid out here uh, it's just a case of rolling the mat out uh, and then building up your terrain uh, on top of that so uh, it just provides an excellent base or foundation to your game uh, and then uh, you can lay your terrain and what I've done here is I've got my terrain pieces on the table and then just some rock scatter just got these from the beach here and then a bit of lichen and it just breaks the whole thing up so you've got the uh, the colour of the terrain here and the stones and the scrub help to match it into the colour of the mat here. And uh, this mat in, in particular is called Barren Wasteland. Um, so it matches in very nicely with my desert terrain here. It's got sort of this valley running up the, uh, the middle here. And these marks you can see perhaps where uh, tanks and vehicles have gone through. And these kind of rocky outcrops. It's all uh, printed nicely onto the mat so you can put your terrain on. And then there's that area of interest. The, the base to a game board is one of the most difficult bits to get right. Uh, usually you have to custom build it, it's difficult to store, but with these battle mats you just need a nice flat gaming surface. You can roll the mat out and then stick your train on top and it just provides an excellent base. They're made from the same uh, materials like a mouse mat, um, so it's just kind of rubber here and then the design uh, is printed on a, a different material on top. And they just roll out, they sit nice and flat. Uh, this one's been rolled up for quite a while, just rolled it out here and it's just gone nice and flat onto the table. You put your train on top and you've got a lovely backdrop um, for your games of Warhammer 40,000. But you can check out all the mats uh, that Frontline Gaming do. Uh, FrontlineGaming.org is the website uh, and you can check out the different mats. This one's 6x4. Uh, which is perfect for games of Warhammer 40,000. Uh, they do ship, as far as I know, worldwide. Uh, I'm in the UK and I was able to get a hold of mine uh, easily. I think they have a warehouse in the UK, actually. So for those of you in the UK and indeed in Europe, I think postage uh, should be pretty good if you want to get a hold of uh, these battle It's very nice indeed. And it's just a really nice backdrop um, for our game here today. Right, so uh, Brian has chosen to deploy first and then he can choose to go first or second. So we're going to go on to deployment now for both these two armies. Right, so deployment here for the Night Lords. Uh, so Morlefiend anchoring the right hand flank. Uh, then the Contemptor Dragnaught with him just there as well. And then uh, Predator at the back here. Uh, Raptors just in front of him. Uh, the Bikers, five of them, just there. Uh, then the Land Raider uh, with the Chaos Chosen inside. And then coming across an empty rhino, uh, the Morlefine anchoring this left-hand flank, and then two units of Cal Space Marines uh, anchoring the extreme left here. So it's a wide spread here. Uh, Brian did deploy first, so he sort of had to uh, spread out across the table because objectives are running all the way across from one end uh, to the other. And then uh, coming around here for... The Orcs, the uh, Gorkonauts anchoring the Orc left-hand flank. Two units of trucks with the boys inside. Uh, the middle one here has the Weird Boy. Uh, he has rolled uh, on his psychic powers. He has power vomit and war path. Some good powers rolled up there. Storm Boy's anchoring at the back. Uh, and then uh, the Battle Wagon. Gut Ripper inside there. Uh, the Mega Knobs and two mechs have joined them as well. Bikers here spreading out. And then anchoring the right-hand side, the six killer cans for the Orcs. So both armies spread from end to end uh, with objectives all across uh, the table here. So fascinating stuff. 
Uh, we sh could see a head-on collision in the centre. The Orcs will advance. Depends if Brian's willing to advance as well, his Night Lords will have to see. Right, values of the objectives. So this is the Orc left uh, flank here looking up. Uh, one point for this objective here. Uh, then coming back towards the Orc deployment zone. Two points for this objective. Uh, then coming across two points for the ammunition dump. Uh, so not much value on the left hand side but on the right four points for this objective near the Orc deployment zone. Uh, three points here for this objective uh, just inside uh, Brian's and then the final one on the extreme Orc right flank is worth three points. So most value around this area here uh, for the Orcs so uh, tactically they may have to sort of swing around to come onto these higher value objectives so that may well see some maneuvering this game here but we're going to go into the first turn of the game and brian is going to he is going to go first so we're going to see the first turn it's night lords are going to start it is night fighting as well so at the dawn of this day it may not even be dawn actually it may be some electrical storm going on that's caused darkness across the battlefield but night lords will be going first I uh, just mentioned the Orc Blitzer Bomber will be coming on from reserve. And we do have a chance to see initiative. Orcs don't... I don't think I've done it yet, actually, with this Orc Army. But we'll roll up here. We'll give it a go. There's always a first. A four. No, not this time around. So it will be Night Lords turn one coming up now. So Brian, uh, just moving here, just deciding whether to come forwards. No doubt he will with some units, but it'll be interesting to see whereabouts he comes uh, forward with his different uh, units here. Infantry moving up already on his left. The interesting part of the table will be over here, 
uh, to see what the Morlefane and the Contempt of Dreadnought do as they face off against the Gorkonaut here. It's just creating a bit of a showdown here. Uh, Brian just deciding how best to take this big machine on. Right, so moving for the Night Lords on turn one, uh, edging ahead here uh, with this Chaos Space Marine unit. Uh, Morlefane, quite predictably, really, uh, expects it to come forwards. Uh, Brian can be bold with this unit here, and it's come ahead here, uh, looking down at the Killer Cans. Uh, Rhino holding position there, uh, pretty much on that objective already. Uh, Land Raider spinning around, ready to lend some fire support in this direction towards the, the main bulk of the Orc force here. Bikers holding back. Uh, then uh, Predator just anchoring at the back uh, and then coming around uh, Raptors just holding behind uh, the rock formation here just waiting, biding their time Bryce is conscious of that orc bomber coming on uh, and dropping uh, nice large blast markers on his infantry unit so he's just being a bit cautious there uh, Contempt to Dragnaut and Morlefiend on this right hand flank advancing forwards uh, a little mini battle perhaps going to take place here how Either side is going to try and deal uh, with what's facing them here. Dragnaut and Morlefiend here. Gorkonaut um, staring straight at them just in the old deployment zone. So fascinating stuff. No psychers uh, for Brian's army. So we'll go straight on to the shooting phase now on turn one. Right, so uh, shooting here, just shifting up two inches with the Chaos Space Marine squad there. One inch uh, just shifted out there by the Morlefiend. Just holding on uh, guard duty with that one. Uh, firing here with the Land Raider, uh, firing across at the Gorkonaut, penetrating hit, uh, hull point taken, result of a five, and we've actually lost uh, the the big gun here, which is a shame, so the mechs will have something to do. Uh, then the uh, Predator firing through, uh, some of the shots scattering, um, passing a cover save here, it's scattered onto this truck, uh, penetrated this one, and uh, a hull point and a shaken result. Uh, then the passengers inside, the Orc boys, um, failing their pinning test, and, and then the, the Orc knob actually killing one of the boys to keep them in order there. So ca one casualty caused, uh, but that's the Orcs inflicting it upon themselves. Uh, we're going to finish off the shooting phase here with the Contempt of Dregnaut. He's going to shoot at this truck here. It's not going to get a cover save. Okay, so he's firing uh, the Havoc launcher here. On to seven, three days, three inches that way. Okay. So you reckon we've got a scatter, it's three inches come across, can actually gonna hit this one, which is in the open. Um so you can roll up to penetrate that one. Strength five, so there's a chance he could do it. Oh, six he does. Uh we get a six plus for night fighting here. No. A six plus for ram shackle. No, so he can roll up if he rolls high enough, he'll blow up this transport he gets a six <laughs> he's destroyed uh, the truck here is trouble for the orcs uh, explosion detonates here and orc boys come flying out of the burning rack of this truck we'll get that resolved uh, but he's still got the, his main part of his shooting it's worked out well because the actual target is that one there right we'll see if he can blow that one up as well and um, so eight shots eight shots unbelievable a few ones, but f still five hits. Strength eight, so he's gonna need twos to glance. I hope he gets five ones here. There's two ones, one cock dice, a couple shots coming through. Penetrating hit, okay. So looking at three penetrating hits, we'll roll up for these. So night fighting, six, no. And then uh, ram shackle to try and downgrade them. No, so three penetrating hits. He can roll up here. Okay. Right. Sixes, he'll do it though. Open topped. And he gets the six. So that truck explodes as well. It's good shooting from the Contempt of Dragon. Very, very impressive. Uh, both Orc transports destroyed. Right, so results there. Uh, done. Number of Orc boys being dropped from both units. Explosions coming through and killing a number of Storm boys. But one Storm boy already killed, by the way. Uh, that was firing from the Predator uh, coming through as well but uh we've passed uh we've actually got pinning checks and morale to do they're done morale and pinning passed here uh morale failed and roll again failed so roll on their chart they get a one so they're born to fight we'll do uh, pinning for them failed they can roll again seven 
is what they need and seven is what they get. So we're okay for morale. I think the orcs are more in shock than anything else to see their ramshackle transports pulverized in the first round of this game. So immediately orcs uh, are going to have to try and recover from this. It's nasty shooting coming through from the night lords and uh, that contempt of Dreadnought definitely held in contempt by uh, the orcs and gut ripper here. Right, so that's shooting finished. Uh, Havoc launcher fired here as well from the Rhino. Uh, no wound done on one of the bikers. Uh, and then Ben rolled a six here to run with the Mauler Fiend. Just electing to come forwards a few more inches. So getting dangerously close to each other. Would fancy the Mauler Fiend more in the combat perhaps. It could smash through with its strength 10 uh, there uh, for its close combat weapons. But strength 10 in return for the Gorkwin. It would go last though. So conundrum here for the Orcs. Uh, they've been hit hard uh, on the first turn, and they've got to try and recover now uh, to try and keep themselves in this game. Difficult decisions for Gut Ripper to make, uh, but he will orchestrate some kind of plan, no doubt, and he's not to be underestimated. We'll go on to the first turn now for the Orcs. A difficult turn ahead. So for the Orcs here on their turn one, uh, despite the damage being done, uh, Gut Ripper is surging or encouraging his lads to surge ahead. He leads the charge up the table inside the battle wagon, which has been joined uh, by the Weird Boy, has joined those who got picked up and has been transported along 12. Uh, Biker shifting across from here, 12 inches passing dangerous train checks. Uh, and the boys here without the transports just going on foot, uh, moving up uh, five inches here. Uh, six inches here of this unit, so moving along quickly enough. Storm boys relocating as well, shifting out to the left, left, just going uh, up next to the Gorkonor, which has moved along. Uh, it's just turned at an angle there, just so we could get six inches up without going into the cover, just there. Uh, and then coming across, the killer cans adjusting themselves, getting to within range uh, with their rockets, ready to try and let off a salvo at the Mauler Fiend just there so that's movement done for the orcs wouldn't say we're optimistic but we're not going to give up here we're going to keep pushing ahead whilst gut ripper lives there is hope for this orc force there's no doubt about that but we're going to go on to the psychic phase i think we'll no we'll see what we can do we'll let the weird boy have a go here 
I'm just on a psychic phase here. I was going to bypass it, um, but decided to use the weird boy, and it's worked out pretty good. Uh, five on the uh, number of uh, dice there, and then two for Master Joe, and an extra one that he gets as well. Uh, and we've let off Frazzle. Uh, Brian tried to stop it and foul. We've got a direct hit over there. Five of the Raptors have been wounded. Uh, so Brian's going to roll up for saves here. He's just going to do them one bit at a time because he's got weapons that could be. Yeah, okay. All right, one's gone through. Give him a four up cover save. Five up for the train, and then it's night fighting. That's the flamer just killed. So the next two passes those. Excellent dice rolling, but one of the Raptors has been killed. Yeah, so uh, Warpath now uh, cast on there as well. That went off successfully. Uh, no uh, Perils of the Warp this time, which was, uh, makes a change for the Weird Boy. <laughs> he's still intact. Uh, he's killed uh, one of the Marines or one of the Raptors over there, and uh, he's psyched up the lads inside. They'll get plus one attack with the Warpath, just in case we get charged, possibly. Uh, so that's Psychic Phase finished. On to Shooting Phase uh, next for the Orcs. Slightly more encouraged now, thanks to the... Uh, weird boy and his strangeness. Right, shooting here for the orcs, just making a start. Uh, we'll go with the killer cans, hoping they can do something to that uh, Maul of Fiend just ahead. Uh, we're going to fight this one separately. Uh, Brian's going to get a cover save from there, 5 plus, and then uh, night fighting becomes 4 plus. So I roll that one up. It's on a 4 to hit. Croc Gunner forgot to load the rocket into that shot. <laughs> uh, press the button, nothing happened. We'll fire the other three. The Grotzookas are out of range. Uh, yeah, just check that. They're just out of range, a few inches. So just three shots with rockets. They are within range. And we'll need fours for hits. So you get two hits. Now, if you can just repeat that with two sixes. A four and a six. Can't complain. Uh, one glance and one penetrating hit. He does have this invulnerable save to make, but some damage coming through here. Glance. Okay, here it is, the glance. He passes, this is typical, and if he passes this one, it's going to infuriate the Grot Guns. One, it has gone through. I'll just roll on the result here. A six is good, a six will be immobilised. <laughs> a six we get. The Orcs needed a little bit of that, and a Grot Gunner there has aimed the rocket, somehow getting through uh, to the powerhouse inside that Mortal Fiend, and it has immobilised that thing. So good turn up there for the Orcs on the flank. And uh, hearty cheers from the Grot Gunners. They, they come out of the inside of their uh, protection. They're dancing and jumping on top, celebrating. <laughs> They've immobilised a Maul of Fiend. Humble Grot Gunners uh, have done some damage there. I'm proud of them. They've done well. See how long they last, though. They don't usually last very long, but we'll see. Congratulations to them. It doesn't happen very often. So uh, soak that in whilst you can see it, because that's not going to happen again for a long time. <laughs> Right, so then uh, shooting across the other side here, I've gone uh, to shoot this one here. Uh, tried to get the mechs repairing first of all, they failed. Uh, but a rocket hit has come through against this Maul of Fiend. There's our roll to penetrate. Uh, Brian has failed uh, his, his demon save. Uh, so we get a roll here on the penetration table. If we get a six, uh, then it is a second Maul of Fiend <laughs> immobilized. It can't be done. Surely it's impossible. <laughs> Four. It's immobilized for a turn, at least. Whole point taken. And a stunned result there on a four. Yeah, just checking the rules here. Yes, demonic possession. So on a two plus, they ignore it. So he just needs a two or more. Yeah, okay, that, exalts, that, that result is ignored. So just one whole point taken. And uh, other than that, that is it. Okay, so he's free to move off. He's not stuck there. All right, so uh, the rest of the shooting done for the Orcs. Mostly run moves here. Six inches surged ahead. Uh, we've got Ripper and the Battle Wagon. So that's creating uh, something for Brian to deal with there. Bikers moving up as well. Uh, then the unit of boys. This one moving here. This one sort of shying away from the Gorkonaut. And then the Storm Boys shifting across six inches as well. It's a bit of manoeuvring going on for the Orcs as they're trying to adapt uh, to the situation. But it's the surge of green heading up in this direction. Uh, towards the Night Lords. Here's aggressive stuff from the Orcs. I have to see if it pays off. Uh, so assaults, yes. Here, we're going to need 11 inches. It's just over 10. Uh, we'll roll it up. I uh, Just there's not much we can do. We've got to charge them all, I think. Um, or on the back foot. We won't stand too much chance against it, but we're going to roll up here. No. Okay, so Brian will have to choose. He may come after the Gorkonaut. He may have other plans for the Maul of Fiend there. We'll have to see. 
Uh, but that failed charge there with the Gorkonaut marks the end of Orc Turn 1. It's been an interesting turn. Uh, a turn where seeds of hope have been sown thanks to the grots over here. Uh, we're discussing it. It's very interesting. It's opened up this flank now for the Orcs because the Night Lords don't have too much. Now this thing is stationary and stuck there. It's guaranteed to be stuck for the rest of the game. Uh, the units here don't have much that they can use in response to the killer can. So Brian may have to divert some of his force over here, uh, but they may well be too busy dealing with this orc green tide coming up. So by no means is the game over. Uh, both sides still in the fight here. Uh, so orcs at the moment acting the most aggressively, uh, but we'll have to see if that pays off. We're going to go on to the second turn now, crucial turn for the Night Lords as they try and counter this bold orc move. Right, so movement done here uh, for the Night Lords on their turn two. Just moving up here with these Chaos Space Marines, now securing that three point objective. Uh, moving up six of these as well to give them some support. Holding here with the Maulafine, doesn't really have much of a choice. Uh, Rhino surging ahead 12 to uh, join the advance here. And then uh, moving the Land Raider across, disembarking with the chosen unit ready to charge those uh, power moles there at strength 6. Uh, should be able to bring down uh, the battle wagon there in combat. And he's got a melter here. He's just deployed on the flank as well to let off a shot and try and destroy it. Biker's moving in as well, closing in. And then uh, holding with the Predator so that he can fire maximum effect. And then coming around here. Hasn't committed the Raptors. Interesting. It's just moving them around uh, in this direction to support uh, the attack on this side, Contempt of Dragonaut moving up and actually securing the one point objective there. And then the Mauler Fiend, he is going to send it in to take on uh, the Gorkonaut. So, a lot of things that uh, no doubt a lot of you are wishing to take place. A showdown here, Mauler Fiend v Gorkonaut, looks like that's going to take place. And then a big smash up in the middle, I think which both of us were hoping for. Uh, looks like that's going to take place as well. It's fascinating stuff here. Going to go on straight into shooting phase now. Uh, for the Night Lords on turn two. Right, so shooting here for the Night Lords, uh, just moving into cover, so they're well on the objective now, uh, and then shifting across with this unit here as well. Uh, coming across, one biker killed, passed a load of jinx saves, uh, three plus. That was fire from the Predator coming through, so got away with that. One of the shots scattered, killed a couple of boys uh, from this unit, and one boy from that unit landed just there. Uh, so that's that damage coming in, and now Brian is just about to fire the chosen unit. He's firing the flamer across here, catch some of the bikers, and then open top to uh, catch some of the uh, unit inside as well. Right, so shooting here, uh, a good melt hit coming through and blowing up the transports, orc transports being destroyed here. Uh, Brian fired the flamer through, it did hit the passengers, fouled two saves in there, uh, so the uh, Maganob. Uh, boss has taken one wound and then another wound on one of the uh, mega knobs there as well. We've rolled two ones tragically uh, for our saves. Yeah, and a biker was killed as well from that flame. So it's good, good hits there from the flame. A lot of damage done. Uh, passed with our pedic there. We've got Ripper and his squad, but they've lost their transport now and are open to assault. And Brian reckons potentially those bikers could do some damage. Uh, the commander is in there and he's got some pretty good close combat attacks. So Gut Ripper may well be in trouble. Uh, this rhino moving forwards as well, six inches. Looks like he's going after this four point objective here. Right, so the rest of the shooting here, Land Raider firing through and no damage done. And then the bikers firing through, no damage done. One wound coming through, but passed with a cover save of five plus. Uh, they're coming across the Contempt of Dreadnought firing through. Uh, three Storm Boys killed. They passed morale, but their numbers have been dropped down. 
and then just running across here with the raptors just advancing a bit more ahead but that's shooting finished pretty good uh losing that key transport there for the orcs so we'll go on to assaults i reckon brian's got a couple we may want to charge those chaos space marines in as well possibly we'll see we're going to go on to assaults now there's definitely one over here as well so i'm going to roll up for those and see what happens all right so combat's here uh, charges taking place uh, the marines have gone in Cow Space Marines and the bikers as well. And uh, Brian has used his commander to issue a challenge to Gut Ripper. Gut Ripper, sneaky that he is, as usual, was backed out. And a brave young mech has uh, stepped forward to fight against this commander. But Brian's rolled up. 11 attacks will be coming his way. So that mech looks like he's in a bit of trouble. Brave as he is. And then over here, uh, the Mauler Fiend has charged in against the Gorkonauts. That's another combat that will take place. Two crucial combats, possibly game deciding, potentially. Uh, we'll see how well they go. We'll get these resolved now. So we'll do uh, the challenge here. Uh, Brian will go first with his grenades, and the axe isn't unwieldy, so he's going to roll up here. 11 attacks uh, he's rolled up for, 6 usually, and an extra 5 for his d6 roll. Freeze he'll want for hits. He's actually missed. He was worried that he might miss with a ton, and he has missed with a fair few. Uh, twos for wounds, though, and there's nothing we can do to stop that from coming through. And they all have. Right, so we're going to distribute these hits here. Resolving it there, uh, both mechs gone. I've had to get rid of the weird boy and need those two plus saves. The weird boy's being brought down as well by that uh, whirlwind of gore from the commander. Brian's going to do the rest of his attacks now with that unit that's still going to get to go first at higher initiative here. Right, so let's hope this mega armor helps us out. Biker's now fighting. Uh, Brian can roll up all of his dice together. They'll be on fours. Okay, and then uh, he will be on Five, but fours to wound. Yeah, that's strength four. So, yeah, it's just a decent roll there. Five saves that we'll need to make with those uh, mega knobs. Twos is good. Twos we get. That's what we're relying on. Fours to hit. Yeah, all attacks coming through here. They need fours to hit. It's getting a fair few hits. It's pretty good. She's on twos to wound now. Twos or more. They all do. So we've got a ton of two up saves to make here. How many is that? Eight saves yeah, to yeah. make. Yeah. We're going to get a couple of ones here. Yeah, yeah, we do get a couple of ones. There's two more to roll. Yeah, all right. So that's a whole mega knob gone. He's chopping his way through them here. There's, there's two left. They're on a wound each. Um, so any ones we roll now, and we're dropping down some crucial attacks. So the rest of his uh, chosen unit fighting got a ton of attacks here. All right, so he's on force to wound with these. It should average itself out. Yeah, it's a nice fair amount of hits. We'll just separate those out. Yeah, so we're on uh, fours to wounds now. With these, again, should be... Whoa. Five. Five. All right. We could pass all of these. Or double one. And Gut Ripper's on his own. Oh, there's a one. Another Mega Knob. Got crucial, that. Very, very crucial. Uh, but we will go... On to attacks now for the orcs in response. Right, so uh, Gut Ripper can't fight. Remember, he backed out of the challenge. So just one Mega Knob. He does get four attacks uh, because you do have that warp half psycho ability. We'll fight against the regular Marines here. So fours needed. Triple hit. Okay. Two to wound. Two. Okay, so that's helped a little bit. We've lost by five is the total. So we're going to be on leadership here for Gut Ripper of four. We can re-roll it. We failed with eight, so we'll re-roll. Definitely failed that on seven. Uh, so we're all on our chart here. Six is not good. We'll re-roll with the boss pole. Still we get six. Yeah, so we're bust there. We can't hold morale on that. That's a result of a six. So we're going to roll up for Cut Ripper to see how far he runs. He runs five. He's actually initiative four, but we'll be slowed by the Mega Knob. We'll let Brian roll up. Roll up here with the bikers. If he rolls well, Gut Ripper is run down. He rolls a five. Gut Ripper has been run over by Night Lord Bikers. What a shock result that is. Our army commander uh, destroyed there. Brian has well and truly blunted this orc attack. He's very satisfied with that. Small model, really, uh, that biker is. But in amongst that unit, there is that uh, chaos lord there, and he has really done some damage. Surprised Gut Ripper, I think overrun and hacked down uh, by that incredible close combat fighting potential that unit has. So well done to Brian. We'll do consolidation moves. Gut Ripper is removed from play. Perhaps still alive, but it's been run over. 
Squeak's been run over as well. Gobbler's been <laughs> knocked down in a road rage incident. Tragic results there. Uh, orcs are in shock as they've advanced. They've just seen <laughs> Cut Ripper run over and hewn down uh, by these rampaging night lords. There, there's no reluctance of them to take the fight right to the enemy. They've charged an orc green tide head on. They've just decapitated it. So it's good work there. We'll let Brian consolidate, and that will be the end of that combat. We've still got this one to go. It could get even worse here for the orcs on. Night Lord Ten Two. In hindsight, should have accepted the challenge of Gutter. He would have died, but he would have absorbed. He probably would have died. But now, hang, hang on a second. Brian rolled. How many wounds in the end? Was it four? Four. So Gutter could have lived. Should I do a hindsight roll? <laughs> Feel no pains. I'll just see what would have happened. Double six. Gutter would have lived, and would have hacked back with his four attacks and Gobbler the Squeak. There you go. So decision was made and it was the wrong one and it's cost the Orcs uh, their main fighting force here. We could have hit back potentially uh, with the Mega Knobs and uh, the uh, cycle would have been like the Weird Boy possibly would have survived as well. So devastating results there. Gut Ripper should have accepted the challenge. He didn't. Backed out and his sneakiness cost him his life. All right, so just uh, slinking along there with those two units, setting them up. Now... Now there's trouble for the Orcs. How are we going to deal with that lot? Just there. Difficult stuff. The units here that we have aren't particularly fantastic. So tough one for the Orcs. May get even tougher. We need a break. We need to destroy this Mauler Fiend and free up the Gorkonaut. Weapons kill three. Okay. Here it comes. Fours for hits. Yes, yeah, three. Well done. Well done. That's what he wanted. And this is strength. Damn. Ten. Three or more. For glances. Demon Forge. Team up. Okay. Two pans. Two pans and a glance. I think and the melt hit could finish off this thing. That's pan. Pen. Alright, okay. Well it's it is dead. It's dead. It's died. Um but he can roll up his penetrating hits to see if it explodes. Just add insult to injury. No, no, okay, but that's the whole point, Scott. It's four whole points and results there is regardless, it's, it's a smoking wreck. Yeah, okay, so the AP1 hit wasn't uh, the one that got the... You got a five there, but it wasn't the uh, the AP1 hit that came through. So it is just a wreck, uh, but it has destroyed the Gorkonaut. And the Gorkonaut he's, hasn't even had a chance to strike back. It's that low initiative for Orcs uh, has been a handicap for them in this fight. The Mauler Fiend uh, ducking under... Uh, the claw there of the Orc Gorkonaut and then ripping the guts asunder of that big hulking and clunking machine. So it's just a burning wreck now. Assault phase is finished. It has been devastating uh, to behold. Night Lords are dominating the table here. We're going to Orc turn two. What can they do in response? There's not much of an army left on this side of the table. There's still options for them, uh, but it certainly will be an uphill struggle. The Orcs look to the skies to see if the Blitzer Bomber will turn up.
Right, so movement for the Orcs here on their turn two. Difficult uh, situation now for the Orcs here, but they're going to keep fighting. Um, perhaps a little bit of an unpredictable move from them. Uh, Killer Cans moving up just three inches here, moving through the terrain, just continuing their advance. There's a three-point objective to go after. Um, there's a four-point objective here. And uh, not much that can stop them at this end at the moment. Well, that land raider is, is freed up now. Uh, Storm boys have jumped up and over here to go and fight against the rhino that's making the move on the four-point objective. The bikers uh, have ignored these two units and are heading off in this direction to try and take out, out the predator. And the two units of boys have uh, ganged together and will try and take on the mortar fiend, would you believe? Uh, so they're going to try and fight that. An overwhelming combat. The two uh, knobs in there, strength seven on the charge, some chance of doing some kind of damage. And the Blitzer bomber has arrived, flown on, dropped the bomb here, failed to penetrate uh, the Dreadnought, uh, but has killed three of the Raptors. So uh, that is the movement phase done. There's no psychic phase. Uh, the Weird Boy lays dead amongst the wreckage and uh, dead orcs just down there. So we're going to shooting now for the orcs on turn two. Right, so orc shooting phase done, and not too bad. Uh, the flyer here, Blitzer Bomber firing down, did catch on side arc, got a penetrating hit, roll to six, so mobilised result there on the Predator at the back. Uh, it's no shooting down here, nothing that we could do of any damage. Uh, and then, coming across here, so uh, once again the crews of the killer cans have, have got out and are standing on top of their vehicles here cheering they've fired through one grotzuka shot coming through from here uh, a double hit 10 wounds uh, 10 hits eight wounds and then brian failing five saves so five cow space rings brought down passing morale but shock uh hit there from uh, a sneaky grot gunner there in the killer cans so we were just discussing at the beginning of the game how i was thinking of dropping killer cans but so far they've been the most effective unit for the orcs so uh they're fighting these little grots to keep in the orc force here shooting is finished i'm gonna go into assault and the orcs do have uh a number of options here so i'll roll up and uh, see if these units can make it into combat Right, so assaults for the Orcs. Uh, the two units of boys easily made it into contact with the Mortal Fiend. They've got this one chance to try and destroy it. If they don't, they're going to have a number of uh, Night Lords units to send upon them. So a furious suicide charge from them, trying to avenge uh, the carnage that's been wrought here in the centre. Storm boys have made it into combat with the Rhino. And the bikers have made it into contact uh, with uh, the Predator. So a chance here for the Orcs to do some damage in return as they try desperately to cling on to this game. I'll roll up these results now, see what happens. So uh, we're doing the knob here first. Uh, freeze for hits to start off with. Oh. <laughs> Brian's had to walk away. <laughs> four misses. It was going so well. <laughs> yeah, strength four. So down to the regular boys now. They need freeze, the regular storm boys. They've not done too bad. Sixes, triple six to destroy. A, a triple six they get. <laughs> Unbelievable. This is a game of strange. It is wrecked. Three hull points dealt out. The rhino's gone. It's been a game of strange dice rolls. It's been some really odd ones so far. And uh, the orc knob there missing entirely. The one that you'd expect to do damage. And the humble orc storm boys dishing out three glancing hits. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm going to go on to this next one over here. Um, so, combat resolve there, well done. They've killed the uh, rhino just there that was going after the objective. Right, so over this side, uh, orc biker knob this time. Let's see if he gets his hits. Immobilized vehicle is auto hits now. Yeah, yeah so just roll up here straight, strength seven. One glance, one pen is enough. Well, just wreck it there because there's nothing that can actually blow it up. Um, so, that predator is a wreck as well. Yep, so that's an objective for them completed. Just the plan sort of gone out the window for the Orcs. They've just spread out and try and do as much damage as they can, uh, knowing that their cause perhaps is lost in this way, is lost in this sector. So they're just spreading out and just going on suicide charges across the table and uh, trying to destroy as many units as we can. Just trying to make the game a bit harder for Brian. Uh, <laughs> that's all we can do at this stage. Just giving him uh, food for thought here. Now... If this Mortal Fiend is destroyed, 
You may have a game back. Well, even then, it's going to be difficult. So roll up here. I think Brian's going to get to strike first. Uh, let's see if the orcs can survive. And there's two orc knobs in there. We'll see what kind of damage they can do. Right, fear test. This is where it could all go wrong. So the one on the right-hand side, leadership seven. They failed. Uh, the orc knob's going to try and keep them in line, which he does. Born to fight. So it's an automatic pass. And then uh, the other one, seven. They do. They overcome their fear and have charged into uh, this demon forged nightmare. So uh, Brian can strike here. Yes. Yep. Nothing. Nothing. Okay. Any more attacks? No. That's it. No. Okay. Right. So it's down to these orc knobs. We'll leave the orc boys. They can't do anything. Uh, weapon skill free. Free. Okay. So eight attacks. This is both the knobs fighting. Freeze for hits. They've all hit except one. It's a good start. Strength seven, fives and sixes. Wow. Sixes are good, fives are good. <sighs> Here it comes. A triple six. <laughs> so, pretty good. Right, so good result here. Triple six and a five, and then Brian's just reminded me here, there is a whole point already on it, so we'll let him roll the glance hit maybe first to try and stop that on a five or a six. No. Doesn't one whole point left. A triple six to try and save. Five. This is it. No, no it's gone. Hawk <laughs> boys have destroyed a Mauler Fiend. Would you believe it? Incredible stuff. Um, that's been uh, an incredible result for the Orcs, it's, it's, well, it's gone perfectly for them, they've destroyed their targets here. Still, they are behind in this game, there's no doubt about that. But the Orcs have hit back hard here, a little bit of a sting in the tower from uh, the units in this sector. Uh, just creating a bit of a headache for Brian, uh, but no doubt he'll hatch a plan to try and take them on. There's not many Orcs left on the table, but they have hit back here, and that's kept the game going so turn two is finished for the orcs the game will continue we're going to go on to the third turn now for the night lords right so uh, combat's resolved there uh f just falling back five inches and four inches of that unit just slinking back into cover uh, they are allowed to do that after uh, fighting against the mall of fame but combat's resolved uh orc turn two finished it's been a rebound for them uh, whether that's going to be enough for them to go on to make some kind of impact in the game, we'll have to see. Yeah, but there are decisions to make here for the Night Lords. Uh, Brian's got to think how uh, he's going to counter uh, this desperate orc move. He's got the potential to do it. Right here, that biker unit, utterly deadly. Uh, he's got raptors as well, the contempt of dreadnought still available, and an untouched land raider also. So we'll go on to the third turn now for the Night Lords coming up. Right, so moving for Brian here, uh, just continue to advance a little bit here with the Chaos Space Marines, continuing to hold that three point objective, shifting over onto the three point objective there. Um, Mortal Fiends are mobilised, moving six inches here with the Land Raider, moving any nose that you can't be touched by the Killer Cans. In combat, at least, perhaps with the missiles, we could do some damage, uh, but moving in to shoot uh, and perhaps go after this four point objective that lays open that can be grabbed. Moving across here uh, with the unit of Chosen. Try and take out the Storm Boys just there. Bikers, he's turned to take out our bikers uh, and then to chase the Orc Boys here. The Dreadnought, Contempt of Dreadnought's on the move and then just behind them, uh, the Raptors as well. That's movement done. Uh, so that's Brian's response to the Orcs. We'll go on to the shooting phase now for the Night Lords on turn three. Right, so shooting phase done here. Uh, Land Raider firing through, he's taken out one of the killer cans. Another one's uh, lost a rocket weapon destroyed and a hull point taken on him. So that's good going. Killer cans can't do much in response, really, just rockets needing sixes for glances. So not looking good there. They've met their match, perhaps. Uh, the Grot Gunners are going to have to concentrate now very hard <laughs> to try and deal with this big thing moving across the table. Past morale here, uh, all the Storm Boys killed, the Orc Knob wounded. Uh, but morale has held uh, Brian lining up for the charge anyway then down here no damage done jinking there with the orc bikers and then a uh, number of orc boys killed uh, this squad is just the one knob left now uh, it's past morale with them and this squad two boys and one knob left and past morale with them that was fire from the contempt of dreadnought and also uh, some bolt pistol shots coming through as well so that's shooting done it's gone okay 
be interesting to see how many of these charges go ahead here we're going to roll on to the assault phase now on turn three for the night lords right so assaults here the bikers have made it into contact overwatch doing no damage two wounds but uh brian passing his armor saves there uh, those orc bikers are in big trouble then um chaos lord there no doubt's going to issue another grisly challenge against the bike and i'll bring him down uh potential i think it's 12 attacks he could get if he rolls well uh so if the commander could even wipe out the squad by himself <laughs> Madness here. Uh, uh, then Brian decided not to charge with the Raptors here against the Orc boys, uh, and then not getting in a charge here against the remaining Orc knobs. So we'll resolve the combat over there. Uh, I think it's a foregone conclusion. We'll roll up, see what happens. All right, so let Brian roll up here. Ten attacks. He's rolled up. Freeze for hits. He'll be actually with that commander. So some misses, but still six hits. He'll be on twos for kills. Yeah, five. So the orc knob will absorb two, and then three bikers killed as well. Right, so three orc bikers left. Uh, they're knob secures, so uh, then morale's not going to be too good. Let's see if Brian can finish them off. So this is the regular bikers fighting. Incredible. One, two, three, four, five, six, sixes, three, fours, and a five. <laughs> uh, we've got fives to win, though. He's done it again. Two sixes. Three sixes. Two fives. So he could do it. Saves a four plus. We fouled three. There's three bikers left. It is a wipeout. A deadly kill there against the Orcs. The Orcs did make it all the way across the other side of the table. They were hunted down and destroyed by the superior Night Lord bikers. Well done. Uh, Brian can consolidate now with that unit. So knowing that unit there, he's free to do as he wants with it. There's not much the Orcs have that can stop it now. There's free reign on the table with them to move about. And the speed as well. He can get anywhere on the table. It's only turn three. Um, so he can go to any corner that he wants. Any objective that he wants. Right, so Brian just consolidating there, finishing up. It's been a good turn for the Night Lords. Uh, they've reasserted themselves here. For Orcs, we've got some Orc boys left. Some burners left, a couple of mechs that are redundant now. Uh, the flyer still remains. Uh, the blitzer bomber, one orc knob just here, and then the unit of killer cans that have fought nobly, uh, but feeling the pressure now from the night lords. Going to go on to the third turn now for the orcs. Situation is even more desperate than it was before, but they'll keep fighting here because they were born to fight. <laughs> Right, so uh, movement here for the Orcs. Just interrupting it here, there's a roll that I'm about to make. It's a one in six. So turning and then coming across with the Blitz Bomb, we've hit the Land Raider here and have penetrated on a 16 with Armor Bane, strength seven. So one dice, if you get a six, the thing will explode and all of a sudden <laughs> the Orcs stand some kind of chance. Brian says no. The orcs say no. <laughs> oh, one after all of that. It's a shame. Becomes a two. Uh, so snap firing only and one hull point. I think, just looking around, that is the last weapon that could have destroyed that vehicle. We're strength seven here with these. Ah, right. oh, yeah, glance. We could glance with the three remaining rockets, but that is desperate stuff. So he tried. Uh, but failed there. We'll continue on with orc movement now on turn three. Right, so movement phase done. Killer Can's moving up here, uh, advancing forwards. And then uh, we've seen the bombing run done there already. And then uh, just holding back here with the burners. And this knob tried to move across to join the assault, but roll double one, moving through cover, so he's stuck there. And these guys roll a double six in contrast, uh, moving across to try and get a charge in. Um, that's been done for the Orcs, not many options for them. Stormboy actually jumping back 12 inches here as well. So we're going to go on to the shooting phase now for the Orcs on turn three. Right, shooting phase for the Orcs here, just running around over five inches with a Stormboy. And then coming across here, uh, Grotzuka firing, no damage done this time, two wounds, but... Um, Brian passing two power armor saves, getting ready to potentially to try and charge. Uh, and then across here, no shooting at all. So 
straightforward here for the Orcs. Uh, then the Flyer firing down uh, a couple of wounds, but again, Brian passing his power armor save. So I'm going to go on to Assaults now. Turn getting pretty quick here for the Orcs, as there's not much left on the table for them. Roll up these charges. Uh, going to need a triple six to bring down the Dreadnought if the knob survives a heroic charge. Full hardy, uh, but it's instinctive from the Orcs, and the Killer Can's going in trying to clear the first objective here. So I'll roll up charges now. Right, so assaults have gone in here. I forgot about Overwatch with that thing. Uh, it brought down the first Orc boy, took a, a round in the chest there and exploded in front of the re remaining two. Uh, but they have made it into contact. That melee will go ahead. Uh, and then failed to charge with the killer cans, so uh, that's a shame for them. No damage done this turn. Uh, the grots seem to do better when they are at a distance from the enemy. The closer they get, the worse they get, so it appears. Uh, and that is it. Not much at all. Uh, so we'll get the combat's resolve. It's just this one here. We'll let uh, Brian roll up here. Uh, he'll go first. And three or more, like five. Five, yeah, it's a freeze to hit. Gets two. Two's yeah, two's to win. We got normal armor saves here. Four plus, past one, fouled another. So uh, an orc boy killed. So we're now down to the orc knob. Here's his chance to be a hero. Freeze to or no fours to hit. It's failed. Get one six. No, he doesn't. No damage. Lost the combat. Roll up morale. Failed. Roll on the chart here. A two. We'll keep that. Excess hits that we roll will be lost. There's only one guy left, so you will just carry on in the fight. That's the combat is done. Disappointing for the Orcs, there's not much of them left now. And we're going to go on to the fourth turn for the Night Lords as they seek to secure victory here. Right, so movement phase done here uh, for the Night Lords on turn. Four. Just holding on to the objective here of this unit. Same with the other unit, Maul of Fiends stuck. Land Raider holding position for now, just to take shots uh, at the Killer Cans. And then uh, Brian's done his turbo boost move already, uh, moving up 12 here, and then 12 again with the Night Lord Bikers there. Just slight reshuffle this unit there on their objective, so they're quite happy. Uh, Raptors jumped up and over. They lost the Melter, uh, doing dangerous train check there. And the Contempt of Dragnaught uh, continuing on. In the combat, so that is the end of movement. We'll go on to the shooting phase now for the Night Lords on turn four. Right, so shooting phase done. Uh, just snap firing here, the land raider, no damage coming through on the killer cans, and firing through here with bolters. Uh, killed one of the burner boys, there's the, the mech actually. One wound from pistol fire as well from the raptors, and that's about it really. Uh, so, gonna go on to the assault phase now. And just looking around the table, really, it's just over here. Can the Raptors make it in uh, to contact with the Orc Knob? Right, so Brian Ishin, did, uh, he's made it into combat, needed a five. He got a five just about, almost failed, but uh, made it in. And he's issued a challenge. He'll go first. If he has grenades, yes, they do. So uh, the Lightning Claw guy is your leader? Yes. Right, okay. So here it comes. Four attacks. Weapon skill Four, so are we, yeah, so just the one hit there. Uh, this is a shred though. Failed, it gets a reroll. Can't see it's on the Land Raider. He's got, oh, six, the knob's brought down. <laughs> well done. So you can consolidate. Uh, it was a quick and swift end to the Orc knob just there. So uh, consolidated here, six inches rolled so onto that objective now. Uh, we'll just continue the combats against the Contempt of Dreadnought. Uh, and the orc. No, but let Brian go first here. Three attacks. One hit. One hit. Gets his wound. We've got two wounds left, so it should be alright. We fouled that one, so we're half dead now. Okay. Yeah, fighting back with three attacks. We get two hits. Double six would be utterly incredible. A one and a two. <laughs> the orcs have run out of steam here. Uh, that marks the end of the turn. There's no more combats to resolve. Uh, Night Lord's sitting on multiple objectives now. Here, here, here. Approaching this four point objective, and here, and here as well. So it looks like we're lining up for a convincing win for the Night Lords. Orcs will press on. They're going to go on to their fourth turn now.
Right, so fighting for pride here with the Orcs. <laughs> we're trying to knock up as many points as we can. I think we're on zero at the moment, so <laughs> we'll try. Killer Can's moving up. Brian says there's not much he can do to stop them. Try and get a charge off with the Grotz this turn. Stormboy, uh, there's no point trying to hang around the four-point objective, so we've jumped up and over here. And uh, then lining up here to flame uh, these Raptors and then potentially charge them as well. And then the melee continues there. So we've gone to shooting phase now. Right, so we're going to shooting phase now. Uh, just lined it up here so that we get the free flamer hits coming in. That's 12 hits. We're all up to wound. We want an extremely good roll to, to force a lot of saves. But it's fours for wounds. And it's average. Six saves. It's doable here. It could drop a few of the marines. And it all depends on Brian's roll here. And he rolls pretty good. Just one brought down. Yeah. Will be a mirror check though. No one else is going to shoot at them, so I'll let Brian roll up for that. Seven. They're fine. Difficult now. That's made the task uh, difficult there uh, for the burners. Probably going to have to charge them anyway. Right. Shooting done. Killer cans are not going to fire. We want to get into combat is the key with them. Um, don't want Brian falling back and then I was stuck there. Uh, and then the Storm Boy just moving around five inches, so well away from most of the fighting, although there are weapons that Brian has that can still target him. Um, we'll go on to assaults now, uh, see what the Orcs can do. There's an assault here, potentially, and then uh, over here for the Killer Cans. Right, so melees uh, continues here. We have made it into combat, but we've lost one of the burners there uh, from Overwatch fire. And then across here, I'll tend to charge, so that melee uh, with the killer cans finally will go ahead. Uh, so combat resolved here. Uh, we were killed before we even got a, a chance to strike, uh, and then Brian's just consolidated onto the objective. It's dark days here, fighting the night, lo night lords uh, with the orcs. But uh, Brian will go first with the contempt to Dreadnought. Gets his triple hit. Say goodbye to the Orc Knob. Two's to wound. Yep. Three saves, a four plus. He's a goner three times over. So no Orcs now in this sector at all. It is five Killer Cans and a Stormboy Knob left. Right, so talking of Killer Cans, uh, Brian could go first with crack grenades. Yeah, that's the only thing I can do. Okay, so we get four attacks. And you'll need threes to hit. It could cause trouble here for the cans. Just the one. It's strength six. Four. Ten. Nothing. Okay, armor eleven holding. Right, so killer cans. Fifteen attacks for five of them on the charge. Needing fours. Not a particular... Well, not bad. And then twos for kills. That is the wipeout they were looking for. So objective cleared there. Three points for the orcs. Killer cans will hold that. And that marks the end of the turn for the Orcs on turn four. So Orcs eliminated from every sector of the table apart from here. A final last stand mounted by one injured knob and uh, five killer cans uh, manned by Grotz. So Orcs eliminated from this sector of the table. There's none of them left, just burning wrecks and green skin bodies. And then across here, just uh, five killer cans manned by Grotz and then one injured knob at the back. That's all there is for the Orcs. And we're going to go on to the fifth turn now for the Night Lords. Right, so movement done here. Uh, sort of this side of the table is so quiet. Uh, Brian just happy to sit on objectives. Point there held, point there. Or two points there, two points here. So it's all quiet. Uh, deliberating whether to go after the Killer Cans has decided not to. Uh, that AP2 strength 7 could be dangerous. Uh, so holding back, anchoring the four point objective. Uh, so just a bit of shooting uh, to come now. Land Raider will be able to shoot at the Killer Cans, try and reduce their numbers down. Right, so shooting done. Less cannon fire coming through, one hull point just about, and a result of a two. So Killer Cans still going. Uh, that's it, and I'm looking around for assaults, there's none, so a quick turn there, I can hand over to the Orcs now, on turn 5, remember the game could end at the end of this turn.
Right, so movement done here. Killer Cans moving across just four inches. Not sure if they're going to reach in combat. Uh, Storm Boy moving around just to follow up, holding the objective. And so it's going to be around the table. There's not much else. The flyer's turned up automatically from reserve just to let off some Dakar uh, against uh, the uh, Raptors just here. So we're going to go on to shooting phase now. Uh, last gasps, really, from this Orc Force. Right, shooting phase done. I think that was done in less than a minute. <laughs> That's terrible. Uh, here, uh, one save passed, and then we could fire three rockets and uh, against the Marines, but no hits at all, and that marks the end of the shooting phase. In fact, we'll run the Storm Boy here a six inches, so he can run. I'm just going to stick him on the objective. So just shifted him there. He's laying against the rock. He dare not move any further, and he's just holding the objective. We've gone to assaults. We're just going to see if we can charge into that unit of Chaos Space Marines. So a nice big roll. Ten through cover might be enough. Just measuring it up there. This, the cover has held us back. We needed an 11, and we've got a 10. So foul charge there from uh, the killer cans. It's tragic for them there, uh, it's a shame, and uh, the game hasn't really gone their way. We're discussing it here, it was that initial counter-attack that destroyed Gut Ripper and his unit. So much potential locked in that unit, and it was dealt with swiftly by the Night Lords, and that opened the game up for them. And from then on, it was a losing battle for the Orcs. Okay, so that marks the end of turn five for the Orcs. We're just discussing the game here, I think we're going to concede at this point. Uh, there's just to totalling it up. Uh, Night Lord units on every objective except uh, this one here. The Killer Cans did move on, perhaps try and reach this unit. Uh, they would then have to leave the one that they're holding, and it's been anchored by one wounded uh, Storm Boy there. He's not going to survive, he's going to get picked off. Um, Brian's sitting on uh, good, strong objectives here and here. Four points for that one. Remember, he's got Slay the Warlord and First Blood to add to that as well. Holding this objective, I don't think I'll fly. I've run out of bombs, and uh, we can just let off a little bit of Dakar each turn, but it's not going to be enough. Uh, and the Dragnaut here, uh, sitting on this objective. So the Orcs tried their best. It was impressive to see their charge uh, go in, in places, but it really was blunted quite effectively uh, by the Night Lords. They dealt with the threat well. And uh, I've spread out across the table anchoring objectives. It's a good victory for them. We'll calculate victory points, get an exact score now. So, uh, first blood and uh, slay the warlords, two points. Point here uh, for this objective, three points. Uh, four, five for this objective, six, seven for this one, eight, nine, ten, eleven for this objective, and then three more points is. Uh, 14 points to the Night Lords, a very, very good score. And then for the Orcs, uh, pushing on for Lion Breaker, but just three points for this one. So 14-3 uh, the final score. It is a convincing win for the Night Lords. The Orc army once again lies smashed across the table. It is a new force. Uh, we've been experimenting with them. They've won a few victories, and they've done some impressive feats but in this game they've come up against the night lords and they have met their match they've been defeated and that's been quite a clear victory here so well done to brian uh, he executed his plan well and uh, has shown no mercy whatsoever towards this orc force it's been picked apart and dissected and trampled all over by this night lord force they are a force to be reckoned with on the channel number of victories for them now and uh, they have done well here today so 14-3 the final score victory to the night lords this orc army lies smashed across the battlefield so a uh, great game nonetheless uh, it's always fun to use orcs it was a good contest uh, and some bizarre results that we've seen especially with the two mauler fiends uh, but orcs tried their best and failed in the end good game though thanks for watching and tune in next time
Okay. Yeah, so we're just discussing unit of the game here. Uh, there's a number of options, especially for the Night Lords. Uh, Contempt to Dreadnought, honourable mention for him. Uh, those early kills on the Orc uh, trucks, the remains of them just there. Uh, and then ultimately holding his objective and too tough for the Orcs to deal with. But he's gonna, Brian's going to give it to uh, the commander here. Just an insane amount of attacks, strength 7, AP 2. Um, just caused havoc for the Orcs and uh, helped to eliminate the Orcs' best units here that are inside the battle wagon. Uh, for Orcs, we're going to give it to the Killer Cans. <laughs> just that, that hit against the Maulafine really pinned down this flank here, and then the Killer Cans were able to move off. It was the plan initially, was to try and, st if I knew, if I could stop that thing somehow, I would then be free to move up, and it semi-worked, uh, that plan, but it wasn't enough. The Orcs, uh, the Snotlings performing so well, but actually they're Orc friends, or brethren, letting them down, would you believe? So uh, we're going to give units of the game, of the game, uh, to the Killer Hands, just there. So that's both of the units uh, of the game for both sides there.